boy, oh boy, oh boy, is CIAA play getting spicy as Fairfield State is hosting the Blue Bears, and boy, it was a battle to the last seconds. Game Day Nation, let ride. The game started off by Kyrie Temple getting into his bag early. But Jacob Crushfield and the Broncos, they was knocking down threes all night, letting the rain. But the Blue Bears forced another stop. Kyrie Temple, he may highlight up and under. That's normally him. And with this four point play by Chris Worthy, they was letting the CIAA know, yeah, we took some bad losses in non-conference play, but we still the defending champs and they gotta come through Fayetteville. But with this nice little give and go from the Raw Allen, the Blue Bears are trying to cut down that lead and try to fight back into this game. And with another three by Jacob Crushfield, this puts the Broncos up 28 to 21 early. Hey man, they got a message to send y'all. The Blue Bears kept turning the ball over and that's what kept getting opportunities opening up for the Broncos to take advantage of. And like I said, they took advantage of it and they didn't just take advantage, they took full advantage, letting off another three. And after this, I ain't never seen Fifth State Gym get this turn. Oh my God, he blocked it, but somehow it still managed to go in and now the Broncos are up big. Jacob finally misses a three, but it doesn't matter because Daryl Myers is right there for cleanup as he gets the nice put back to them. He done that, he's too little. But then what happens? Another Blue Bear turnover, which forces more opportunities for the Broncos. Jacob misses again, they get the ball, but then they throw another, guess what, turnover. And now Tyler Foster is getting into the three party as he knocks down one right before the half. And hey man, it's looking ugly. But the Blue Bears are trying to still fight back in this game as Tion Tiller gets a nice little spin layup to go. I like that move. But once again, right before the half, this is exactly how the game went. The Broncos played sufficient defense, managed to cause turnovers, and the Blue Bears were not able to sustain from it. So now they are down by 20 at halftime. But like I said, it was still a game. And you're probably wondering why. This man right here, Kyrie Temple, he turns up and goes off for 24 points and a half and i got all the buckets to show you back him down he's too little let's get to the bucket i mean like i don't know what happened in the second half he just started getting to a bucket like he lost the ball got it back pulls up for the tray and knocks it down so then whenever they try to clog up the paint he just swung it out like the good teammate he is and let his teammates eat too as tion tiller knocks down a tray ball and they're fighting back in this game and just as the Broncos were applying the pressure in the first half and causing turnovers, the Blue Bears decided to apply pressure and now they're causing turnovers. And now they're moving the ball on offense, getting it down low to Quan Leach as he's double teamed, but somehow, someway still manages to put this in and the Blue Bears are fighting back in this game. And the Kyrie Temple show continues. Come off the screen, hold on, skip to me lane, over your head, lay and one. He goes to the free throw line, knocks down both free throws to only put the Blue Bears down only eight. But let me tell y'all, man, when the Broncos needed a bucket, Caleb Coleman stepped up and knocked them down. But my dog Kyrie came back and said, man, anything you can do, I can match it. Back him down, back him down. Uh, nice little drop step. Let me get the lay. Come on, man. Like, he was in attack mode. He getting the ball. Hey, yo, come set this screen right now. I'm getting to the rim no matter who's in front of me. But like I said, man, big shot Caleb was what I'm about to start calling him because, bro, when they needed it, he delivered, man. Like, he came in clutch for the Broncos. And off the nice little give-and-go screen and roll action, Dura Myers gets a nice little head tap. But with all odds on Kyrie Temple, he gives it up to Aaron Redox, who knocks down a tray ball. And, hey, the Blue Bears are fighting back in this game little by little. And what made this game so good from Kyrie, he knew when to attack and when to give it up. He gets to the lane one more time to break the score, 70 to 61. And like I said, he knew when to give it up. Swing it to his guy, LeVar. LeVar swings it to Aaron Braddock, who punts face, steps back, hold on, pull up for three, Trey ball. Now the Blue Bears, are, hey, they fighting back into the game, man. 64-72, they might come back. In the first half, y'all seen the Broncos causing turnovers, but now you see the Blue Bears causing turnovers. And off the Blue Bears turnovers, they look to turn them into opportunities as LeVar Allen sees the defense slow to get back in transition, goes up, hey! And one ref call that. The shots stopped falling as much for the Broncos, and now they're trying to figure out a way to get rebounds, but the Blue Bears force another 
turnover as Kyrie Temple gets the ball. Skip to me lane. I'm taking this myself one more time. Lay and one. And now the Blue Bears are only down three. But hey, man, Tyler Foster said, look, man, I ain't losing this game. Give me the ball and just get out of my way. Skip to me lane. Lay. I love it. And if you want one play to show you how the Blue Bears came all the way back in this game, this play is it. They miss a three, but the great hustle by the Blue Bears find another way to get a shot, and it leads to a dunk. Those little hustle plays don't normally make it into highlights, but those are the plays that keep you in the games. But Mr. Clutch, Caleb Coleman, man, change his name to just Mr. Clutch, because the K and the C both stand for Clutch, as he came in Clutch with another tray. But the relentless effort from Kyrie Temple right here leads to another Blue Bear bucket as he fights through like three people right there and gets the rebound on his own and lays it. And with the Blue Bears down three, they play some defense as they force Crest to miss a jump shot, which he barely did all game. They slow the ball down. LeVar brings the ball to the court. He sees his guy Aaron open in the corner. Pump face, jab step. Let's step back one more time. Shebang bang. The Blue Bears have now tied the game up at 77. And we're down to one shot. Who do you think they going to? Mr. Clutch. Caleb Coleman. One more time. He hits another tray. Like, I don't know why they wasn't playing defense on him. He hits another tray. The crowd has turned and the Blue Bears need a timeout for one more play. Now y'all seen last week where Coach Stinson and the Blue Bears drew it up to be Clapham for the last second play. Let's see if they can do it one more time. But the Broncos right here, they're playing some solid defense. They sliding their feet on D, the crowd behind them, and they force up a miss shot. They get the rebound, and this pretty much seals it for the Broncos, man. The Blue Bears trying to get one more shot before the game, but it bounces off the rim. They try to get the rebound, but the time expires on the clock. The Broncos take the dub over the Blue Bears, 80 to 77, as we got a little post-game commotion going on between some of the fans and the Blue Bears. Anytime there's some commotion going on that's really nothing, people are gonna start running over to protect their teammates, and that's when it always turns into something, as you can see closely. And you can just see the rivalry brewing right here. And I promise you, both sides is gonna remember everything on February 9th whenever the Blue Bears host the Broncos in Nutrient Gymnasium. Broncos was quick to let them know that it was time to go and wave them goodbye. 